Hey all you physicists, welcome to the next lesson in the Modern Physics Playlist and today we are talking about energy level diagrams. So what exactly are energy level diagrams? Well, energy level diagrams are another way of representing how electrons are configured in an atom. So the last lesson we talked about the quantum number system where electrons were represented by a sort of barcode like, you know, represented by N, L, ML and MS, where N represents for a shell, L is subshell, M sub L is the magnetic quantum number, and M sub S is the spin. So each electron in an atom could be represented by these four numbers. And remember that um, the Pauli exclusion principle stated that no two electrons could have the same set of these four numbers. So energy level diagrams are, in my opinion, a more useful way of representing the electrons because they provide a visual representation of how the electrons are actually um, arranged in, in an atom. So how will we start off by drawing the energy level diagram? Well, um, we would, basically it's a diagram that has the orbitals, remember what orbitals are? It's um, this row right here. Can you see it? Let me use black. This row right here are your orbitals, are the number of, of orbitals in each um, in each shell. So, what the energy level diagrams is basically ordering these orbitals in terms of their energy levels. So you're basically um, grouping them up into increasing energy. So starting off at the bottom, we have the very first energy orbital, which is 1s. And let me use a different color for each shell. So at 1s, I'm going to use this as I'm gonna circle it in blue. At 1s, we're going to draw it down here because 1s is the lowest possible orbital we can have. It's the lowest possible energy orbital we can have. Now 1s is done and that's all there is for n for the n equals 1 level. So n equals 1 is done. Let's move on now to n equals 2. n equals 2, there are two different orbitals at n equals 2. L equals 0 or L equals 1. There are two different um, different subshells. And within each subshell there are different number of orbitals. So for the first subshell we have at n equals 2, we have we have the 2s subshell. And within the 2s subshell, there is one orbital, so there's only one line I drew. Now for the L equals 1 subshell, which is a 2p subshell, we have three orbitals, 1, 0, and negative 1. So we have 1, 0, and negative 1. So we have this is a 2p orbital. Now, th that's done, so we're done, n equals 2. Now let's move on to n equals 3. Let's have, use a red. n equals 3, there are three different types of subshells. So we start off with 3s. And then we have 3s. Now 3s is done because there's only one orbital in 3s. Now 3p, again, there's three different orbitals for 3p, 1, 0, negative 1. And then for 3d, we have five orbitals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for 3d. Right? There are five orbitals. Now a weird thing happens when you get a 4s. The, the, the reason why it's weird is because 4s... 4s is actually located in between 3p and 3d. 4s is somewhere in here, somewhere in between 3p and 3d. Once you get a 4s, things start getting weird because energy levels kind of mix in between themselves. So a quick um, handy tool for memorizing how these levels are actually arranged is using something called an off-bow diagram. An off-bow, A-U-F-B-A-U, of bow diagram and this is the diagram we basically state each one of the orbitals so we start off with 1s then we go to 2s 2p 3s you just write all the orbitals out in this manner so let me just write out to like about 5f 4s 4p 4d 4f 5s 5p 5d 5f 5g and it, the list goes on so how we use this? Well, we would basically just draw um, arrows at a 45 degree angle, just like so. Just keep drawing arrows like that. And the result, and the reason why we do this will become apparent in a moment. Just bear with me for a second while I draw these arrows out. So the, the arrow keeps going on, right? Keeps going on for each one. So how we use this one? How will we use the off-bow diagram? Well, we just start off at the top here, one S, and we and we just go down the row. And once we reach the end of this arrow, we go to the next row. So we have now 2s. Now we reach the end of this arrow, we go to the next row. We have 2p now. And we go down the arrow, so we, we come to 3s. Then we go back up to 3p. Move down to 4s. 
and note how we skipped 3D. Now, now we go back to 3D. 3D, then to 4P, then to 5S, then all the way back up to 4D. And it goes on and on and on. So this diagram is really, really useful for helping you memorize how the energy levels, how the orbitals are arranged in terms of increasing energy order. So starting from the lowest energy all the way up to, to the highest energy orbital. So let's use it up here. Let's use it in our energy diagram. So where were we? Where, where do we stop at? We were at four. We were at four s. So we were at somewhere around here, right? So we're somewhere around here. Now after four s, we know that three d is a bit above four s. After three d, we go to four p. Remember four p. According to our diagram, four p has three orbitals. Remember every time we see a p, every p subshell has three orbitals within it. So that's. Every p orbital has three. Every x orbital has one. Every d orbital has five. And if you're confused as to why that is so, check back in my previous lesson on quantum numbers. So the four p orbital has three different. Um, I mean the four p subshell has four as three different orbitals. Now we go to four d. Let me check our off-hour diagram. Nope. After four p comes five s, not four d. So uh, remember, after 4p comes 5s according to our off bubble diagram. So 5s, let's use dark blue. 5s is not shown here. So 5s is here. After 5s comes 4d. So we're jumping back down to 4d. 4d, which is somewhere here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Remember, because every d orbital, every d subshell has 5 orbitals. So this is basically how a energy level diagram is arranged. So let's just do a quick example. Um, in this lesson, I, I won't really show you how to use the diagram yet because I'll save that for the next episode, but I'm just gonna give you guys a quick preview of how to use it in this in just this few seconds. So let's say we have carbon. Carbon is the easiest one. And carbon, we know according to our periodic table, has six electrons, right? So how we use this? This is a quick preview of how we use this. So we have two here, we have another two here, and we're left with two more. So this is a basic energy level diagram of a carbon and a quick preview of how, we, how we're going to use it in the next lesson. So hopefully you guys can see how the energy level diagram is a better and clearer way of visualizing how electrons are configured in an atom. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.